Euh, bonjour Ali, est-ce que tu es dans le coin? Si Ali est dans le coin, c'est peut-être une bonne idée qu'il vienne nous rejoindre aussi. Monsieur Ali Kassab, ils ont mis le, le mauvais titre. De toute façon, je ne suis pas CEO de Century Invest, je suis un, un board directeur, alors j'aide l'organisation. Bienvenue euh, ici à Palmeri. Mon nom c'est Georges Sébastiao. J'ai eu l'occasion d'arriver un petit peu en retard ce matin avec toutes les tralala du trafic de, de Paris. On arrive que Paris a réussi à battre un peu Dubaï sur le trafic de temps en temps, surtout l'été avec euh, les vacances. Alors on va passer à peu près les 15-20 euh, minutes en, ensemble sur lesquelles je vais donner un peu un aperçu, c'est quoi euh, les éléments qu'on peut appeler de « mass adoption » Uh, for crypto, and I think uh, we already covered maybe one or two of these elements earlier when we talked about the metaverse uh, and blockchain as a technology. So uh, Centurion Invest is an organization that has been around for quite a number of years, uh, both in Dubai, me, Ali, we have worked uh, together since almost like six, seven years, and we have actually built together one of the largest uh, communities in Dubai and about nine other countries in the region. As you know, uh, building a community is one of the key elements of actually uh, mass adoption. I usually have this term that I use all the time when I talk about being successful in business. And being successful in business needs three key ingredients, and I usually call it like MBC. Uh, I don't know how many people here speak English, but if there's no things, you can always ask me in French, no problem. So uh, M is for money. B is for brains and C is for contacts. So any good solution in business actually needs the three elements, which is the money, which gives you the investment and the scalability, needs the brains, which actually gives you the good quality of solution that is easy to use and friendly to the community. And uh, the last one is the contacts, which is the connections and the ecosystem uh, to actually drive mass adoption. So. Today in uh, my presentation, I will be talking about these elements, but I'll focus on two or three others that complement uh, basically the blockchain and crypto adoption, which is associated with several protocols, DeFi being one of them, uh, which stands for decentralized finance, and NFTs, which have actually become popular uh, in very lately. As you know, both DeFi and NFT got birthed with blockchain 2.0, which is almost about seven years old, and out of that, they started becoming really created about five plus years ago. So, where do you actually spend most of your time? You spend in your time in front of a screen, and why you spend your time in front of a screen is because you have adoption, you have a community that you talk to, and you have a very user-friendly interface. So. If you want to drive massive adoption in crypto, you have to have something that ties your users together in a very uh, unique way. So, one of the key elements of that is something we call DeFi, and that stands for Decentralized Finance. I've done about four or five DeFi projects, and Decentralized Finance has many elements associated with it. It's almost like the best way to describe it without being too technical. It's almost like what we call a neo bank or a virtual bank. It's a bank that instead of having buildings and other physical elements, everything is kind of virtual. It runs inside the blockchain, is based on code that actually runs inside the blockchain. And of course, because it's blockchain, it has the elements of uh, trust that is defined by the blockchain. Because it runs on the blockchain, you cannot stop it. So it has a very high degree of uh, resilience uh, based on it. And uh, it can be very cost effective because you don't have to pay for rent or any other elements that typically, you still have to pay for gas fees, so the blockchain has to be quite efficient, but it's still much cheaper than the cost of traditional banks. Another technology that got created almost at the same time is something that's known as NFTs, that stands for non-fungible tokens. To make a long story very short, most of the tokens in use today are actually fungible tokens. The most popular one is actually something they use probably every day, known as USDT, uh, that is allowed to convert between various coins and uh, crypto and blockchain. The second probably most popular one uh, is Bitcoin. That means all of them have the same price and the same value. 
But in NFT or non-fungible tokens, each token has kind of a unique serial number and a unique value. So this obviously has thousands of applications. Some are financial and some are not. So if you deal, for example, an NFT that actually validates your university degree, it has no value other than just authentication. However, if it is a piece of art or a valuable asset that you tokenize, then it has the unique value of this asset. So what it really means is that when you start combining these two technologies together, you have actually a lot of extra value that you bring to the users in the community. On one side, you have low cost of transactions, immutability that runs across the blockchain network. And on the other side, you have the capability of now pretty much tokenize any asset. So that means you can bring into the blockchain the assets that are actually important to you. This could be art, could be a building, could be gold, could be any other assets. But all of this really only happens if it is simple and easy to use. How many people here have tried to connect a MetaMask in their browser? Did you get it right the first time? A lot of clicks and, oh, why is this not working and so on? No. Blockchain as it exists today is very complex. Uh, maybe not for the technical person, but for the average person every day is simply not affordable or abordable because it's just not easy to use. So it's important to simplify uh, and to render almost like simple click. And actually, the best example I can give you, uh, many people probably have heard about Revolut. Revolut is one of the examples of a neobank. And Revolut is one of the organizations, for example, in, in 14 clicks, you can actually open your account and do your first transfer. That really means that if you have solutions that are easy to use, then you focus on the user experience. So what is the experience means inside that mobile app, all the elements that are required to actually do your transactions, to do your trading, to do your investments, to earn some additional revenue of the one that you have today, then you have a winner, then you drive mass adoption. But even that is actually not enough. Uh, as you know, DeFi uh, has some issues associated with, uh, one example would be things like, for example, KYC or Know Your Own Customer, AML. When you do this using uh, centralized, regulated exchanges, it doesn't really matter too much on which particular jurisdiction they happen to be regulated. Popular jurisdictions today include things like Switzerland, Zug, uh, Estonia, Lithuania, uh, Bahrain, which uh, where I live a good part of my time, uh, created a sandbox almost four years ago. And quite a few big organizations have actually graduated to that. So it gives you kind of a universal system of having an integrated wallet. You can do things like multi-chain. You may think multi-chain is simple, but it is not. For example, multi-chain means I can receive maybe on my Ethereum one USDT and I can say it, send it on Tether and vice versa. Why is that important? Because when you send one Ethereum, for example, on ERC20, chain, it will cost you $50. So if you're sending $1 and you pay $50, it's obviously not very cost effective. If, however, you use some of the other uh, chains, uh, you end up paying maybe $1 and sometimes even less. So you have the advantage of speed and, uh, and all of that. So centralized exchanges combined with decentralized exchanges give you the best of both worlds. One is low cost, but at the same time, a lot of extra functionality. Another important of the extra functionality that you require is what I usually call the on and off ramps of crypto. Crypto is nice, but if you go to the Starbucks and I said I want to pay for coffee, and you say I have crypto, they're going to say, sorry, come back again. If, however, you have something like a Visa or a MasterCard or something they understand, they will actually accept. So exchanges allow you to have these on and off ramps to actually introduce integrated payment uh, systems. And this obviously addresses the issue of, uh, on one side, uh, crypto being very inclusive for the unbanked, but on the other side, providing a very uh, confident solution um, for the marketplace. But is crypto just the future? No. We have many other solutions that actually complement the functionality of this future. And if we talk specifically about DeFi, it means you can introduce new solutions, like, for example, insurance, you can do farming, you can do staking. What does it really mean, farming or staking all of this? It means that if you have digital assets, you can log them for a period of time, could be one hour, one day, one month, or one year, and you can return 
on investments on those digital assets. That means it can give you residual income. And it can actually provide liquidity pool. If many of you have heard about the popular uh, DeFi exchanges that allow you to swap between various coins, how do they operate? They need liquidity to actually enable those transactions to actually go through. The organizations or the individuals that provide that liquidity get returns by enabling that liquidity. And then we have a whole new generation of markets like NFT. For example, Ike Art uh, is becoming extremely important. Famous artists today are choosing to launch their first art on NFT. So we have popular bands releasing their musical albums there. And of course, the earlier talk we had about Metaverse, which is actually combining all these elements together. And what do I mean by that? A friendly 3D environment, a wallet environment where you can have a social environment and you can actually do e-commerce all at the same time. Are we there yet today? No, we're making the necessary steps to be there, but the elements to actually be successful are there. Are we in the summer, the winter? I think we're a little bit kind of going through the winter and we usually refer to this as a bear market. It's actually a good time because it's probably a good time to get into the market so you actually get some upswing. So the best solutions that exist today in the bear market will actually give you the opportunity to succeed in the future because you can easily go two times, three times, or 20 or 50 times. Now, when we're talking about a solution that actually includes a wallet, you want to have all the elements uh, that are key, which includes things like safety, being able to recover your passwords in case you forget them. As you know, certain of the cryptocurrencies, if you forget the keywords that were used to generate your wallet, your assets are lost forever. To give you an idea, somewhere between 15 to 20% of the Bitcoins have actually been lost forever. So it allows you a complete platform with high liquidity and basically a regulated compliant exchange all, all, all in one. So the idea of having an exchange, and I'm not trying to promote here one exchange versus the other, but what is important, you want an exchange that is fast, one exchange that actually has low transaction fees, and while all these elements come together, you actually drive massive adoption uh, within the market. Of course, things like support, uh, 24 by 7 by 365 interaction with the user is also important uh, as well. So the type of returns that you can expect include things like, for example, 20% APR, which is actually much higher comparable to traditional money that you have today in the bank. As you know, today the money that you have in the bank is actually shrinking and disappearing because the buying value associated with that money is actually uh, shrinking every day. This particular token has many advantages associated with it. Uh, one of them is uh, reduced transaction fees. It is allowed to actually power the system. It has been launched actually quite some time ago, and it is in the current stage of round one. So it's basically going to a full public sale. So it's probably a good time to get in, learn about the capabilities of what this solution has. And for everybody that is here, I have good news. If you come downstairs, we'll give you a QR code. And you guess what? You get the free $100 of USDT, so you can start your first experimentations without uh, basically any risk to you. So this gives you the capability of learning the functionality of this solution, um, learning about staking. Uh, another thing that is important about this token is it's a DAO token. It's a governance token. So it gives you the capability to also vote on decisions of upcoming projects. So it gives you a lot more power because you're now a member of an ecosystem and actually member of a cooperative um, as well. Uh, this is a very quickly brief overview of this uh, uh, specifically uh, solution, CIX, Centurion. I wanted to invite Ali, if he's around. Come, Ali, join us here on stage. He's got the right hat. I don't, have a, I don't need one because I'm built for speed, so <laughs> nice to see you here. <laughs> So, uh, uh, Ali can also, no, no, you can use one of these. You should, there, Thank say a few you. words. Thank you, George. Uh, very quickly, I, I think George uh, did an amazing uh, presentation. We know each other since a couple of years. We, um, uh, I have been, uh, serial, I mean, I have always been in entrepreneurship. I started my first startup at 25 years, a couple of years uh, ago. 
and uh, I'm venturing into technology since, since then. Uh, I was awarded in 2018 as a CEO of the year in digital transformation in Dubai for, for having the, one of the largest payment platform for the government of UAE in enabling them going into uh, self-service kiosks. I did many ventures be before that. And Centurion, we are trying to, of course, bring uh, mass adoption to, uh, to this uh, fantastic new world uh, that uh, we hope we will, uh, with, the, with the power and the computation of uh, all the resources that we have around uh, this ecosystem, will uh, finish by giving power to users and be giving power to, uh, to people to have uh, freedom of finance and uh, freedom of income and, and, uh, and, and more, more financial inclusion and more uh, regulation, uh, I think, uh, is required as well. This is why we are uh, operating in Estonia, uh, from Estonia as a regulated exchange. And we uh, are expanding our operations to many countries. And hopefully, uh, as uh, George invited you, we are offering uh, to all attendees in the Paris Blockchain Summit uh, first step in the exchange to experiment the, the platform and feel free to ping us anytime. Thank and that's the much. first gift. The second gift is there's the party after party. It's a very famous song. So we have a party starting here with an NFT artist playing some music, a famous TikToker. Then you have a second party there. And then we'll have an after party. But it, it will be in, uh, in front of uh, Arc de Triomphe. Arc de Triomphe. C'est uh, le discothèque s'appelle L'Arc. L'Arc. Pour ceux qui connaissent, donc ouais. euh, vous, êtes, voilà. vous êtes les très bienvenus. Vous êtes les bienvenus. Et on continue la fête. Merci beaucoup. Ok, très joyeux. Moi, Thank je you. suis là avec vous pour la prochaine présentation.